Cause I know we have the shape of things to come Well, I've had like a photographic background with my mum because she used to be like a wedding photographer and stuff, but I did start helping her and stuff, but that's not the like road I wanted to go down because I don't really like photographing people. I'm more like structures and little urban scapes and stuff. So I thought if I come into college and study it, then I can go off and do what I wanted to focus on. Like anything that's like run down or overlooked by everyone else, I like taking pictures of that because it shows like the hidden beauty that people normally just ignore. Obviously when you're walking past stuff and living in Britain is quite grey so everything just looks dull and boring but when you put a camera into it you can take pictures of these places and you see it there and you can do all the editing to make it look brighter, it's almost like a relief that we don't actually live in such a grey world that people make out because there is a lot of hidden beauty in all these places, but people just don't see it. We look for kids who are passionate about being artistic, I suppose. Now, it, it sort of has a two, it, with, with photography, there's two different ways you can look at this because you have quite a lot of students that come in with a very, very technical mindset where they just want to understand and know how to do technical photography so they can get a job photographing weddings, photographing events, that kind of thing. Whereas what they realise when they get here is actually that's not necessarily the only important thing because when they're photographing, say, a wedding, actually what you need is love and passion because that's what will be seen and that's what will be captured when when students look at, look at a scene and don't just look at it from a technical aspect, but look at it from a social aspect as well. It was in high school when I got an option to do photography and I was like, I'll just try it out. And I did, and I ended up liking it a lot. Uh, editing, sticking, doing the physical and practical on the computers. I got to learn all like about photography there and then I wanted to do it in college after that. My favourite thing about photography is the practical side of it, uh, doing photo shoots, going out, using the cameras, camera control, stuff like that. First thing I thought of photography, I thought I, I want to get my own pictures of photography one day because I like taking profile pics of stuff. But within that section, I discovered something called image manipulation, and that's like an image on top of one another, and it creates like this. It's like it's like a piece of art. The photography teaching team are, are, is a fantastic kind of new young team, and they they're all they're all experienced in industry. First off teachings become like something that they've come into to I suppose share their passion with with the industry and getting our young people to understand how photography fits into our society. Well for me because I've got autism and I'd sometimes have a trouble of understanding things because I need stuff breaking down into detail and explaining to me in in a, in a perfect way with a much understanding way. I have tutors that understand me a bit more. We have dark room, so we go right back to the sort of beginning of photography. It's not just about the, the way photography is, is done mostly nowadays in digital formats. We go back to the beginning so that they understand, I suppose, the process. So, you know, they, they get to do traditional techniques, which then follows on to the idea of, of digital techniques and digital photography, which leads naturally onto post-production. So the, the, the sort of facilities we have are like computer rooms, Mac suites, where you can use Photoshop uh, and InDesign. So Photoshop, for example, for retouching or, or slightly adapting colors or lighting where it needs to be adapted. But then also with programs like InDesign, it means that students can start to understand the context of how photographs work within text. So we've, we've got like state-of-the-art studios where we've got all really high-quality softboxes, high-quality cameras, tripods, 
lighting rigs, all of the kind of things that a student would need in a professional setting, um, which gives them the, the it gives them the, the I suppose the, the tools to to understand how a photography studio would work if they got a job going on from getting a qualification. Well, when you've just got um, a digital camera, you can you just click it and it's done. Like you've not really had to put much effort into it. But when it comes to more darkroom sides of things, you have to fiddle around with all the aperture and everything. So you have to make sure everything's right and then take your picture. But then you're left in like a suspense of whether your picture's turned out how you want it or not. And then when it does turn out the way you want it, it's it's a good feeling. Like it's, it's a good night when you know you've got your picture. We have um, we have a photography dispensary as well where we we have all the equipment that's necessary for for students to work professionally. You know, realistically, if you think about communication, which is one of the main criteria and one of the big skills that students learn at, at, at college doing these art courses or photography courses, is that you know, photography is it's a global language. So it doesn't matter whether you speak Japanese or Iranian or if you're a Muslim or if you're a Christian, photography transcends those language barriers. And I think that it's, it's really exciting for students to go into a future of being able to communicate in that way.